Hello guys, welcome to this new series. Uh, we will be attempting to write a toy kernel for an operating system, from scratch of course. Um, we'll be writing everything, uh, including the bootloaders, for ourselves. Um, to constrain the field of possibilities, we'll assume that we will only be working on uh, Intel hardware, uh, on the x86-64 architecture only. And we will assume that our hardware um, is from the 2010s. Uh, anything earlier than that would just be too much work to support. And where do you find those kind of hardware anymore anyway, right? Um, the main goals we have uh, are to support 64-bit um Addressing uh, have a fully uh, SMP compatible uh, kernel. Uh, SMP is symmetric multiprocessing. Um, have multi threading and preemptive preemptive scheduling. Um, this open system will be written mainly in C, uh, with a bit of assembly to bootstrap it, and maybe just maybe uh, once we get to a high level enough uh, of a project and we don't need to fiddle around with uh, raw pointers, we might switch to Rust. But that remains to be seen, right? Um, we may, if we have time, do some work on PCIe device enumeration and maybe, uh, again, if we have time uh, and enough traction and you guys are interested, we can do some uh, we can do some work on some PCIe device drivers, uh, USB stuff or uh, graphics or stuff like that. Right. So the tools uh, we'll be using for this um, will be for virtual machine where we'll be running our uh, kernel. Uh, I'll be using Box for the start, and then we'll switch to QEMU for. Uh, uh, once we have a, a kernel uh, load in. Uh, the reason for that is that Box has a built-in debugger and it's actually a uh, better experience to use to debug uh, real mode stuff and 16-bit uh, uh, assembly. Um, makes it a lot easier than using QEMU and, uh, and fiddling around with uh, GDebug, right? Um, uh, for an assembler, we use FASM, uh, just because it's really great. Uh, for a compiler, we'll be using Clang. Uh, I will not be using GCC, just because uh, I don't want to cross-compile it, and Clang doesn't need cross-compilation, uh, given the way it works. And we will need a, a GNU environment of some sort with all the... Uh, GNU tools uh, will be making heavy use of everything that's objdump, uh, hexdump, uh, objcopy, stuff like that. So uh, all those tools uh, will need to be present on your system. Um, so it can be anything. It can be a Linux uh, system, WSL, Sigwin, or whatever you want to run this on, right? I will also try to maintain a uh, up-to-date documentation with everything that we'll be uh, seeing and needing uh, to research throughout the um, the work we'll do. Uh, because, of course, um, this is a research subject because uh, I don't have pre-written code and much of this stuff we will research live um, as well as we will be trying to write as much of the code uh, as a live writing session, live coding session, um, so that you guys can follow along if you want. Um, the main objective, I guess, the objective uh, of the first few videos will be to set up enough of a base so that we can work on this project in a live streaming setting um, to interact with you guys, of course, and have this be a collaboration. And... Uh, Basically, I want this project to go from my project to our project, right? There will be a lot of topics to cover and I will gloss over some of them. Uh, I'll of course, give some documentation. But if you want me to further develop any topic, let me know in the comments. 
All right, let's get started. Um, the first thing we need to know is how a computer starts or what's called the boot process, right? So I've already put in the documentation a link that talks about the boot process. So if I just bring it up, it goes into details um, and uh, basically illustrates how the a computer starts. But uh, to make things easier, I've compiled it down to this uh, six step uh, checklist that we can refer to, right? So first of all, boot process, uh, we hit the power button, of course. The motherboard will do its uh, post uh, routine, post is born on self-test. Uh, and then the uh, BIOS will look for a boot device and select one, uh, given a boot priority list. It will load the first sector. Uh, of course, one sector is uh, 512 bytes. Uh, this is something we need to know. It loads the first sector of that boot drive uh, into memory at address 0x7c00. This is very important to know because that's where our first instruction will actually be. That's where, we'll, uh, that's where our execu execution will start. And then it will hand off execution to our code, uh, which is the... Uh, which is at this address here, right? And of course, step six is we execute our code and we do something uh, useful with it. For example, uh, run a operating system, okay? So once we get handed over the execution at uh, 0x7c00, uh, there are a few things that uh, will hold true um, on whatever machine you're running this on as long as it's, uh, of course, uh, compatible with the x86 uh, architecture. And there is that the CPU will be in uh, real mode. That means that it will be in a 16-bit compatibility mode. It will only be able to address uh, one megabyte of uh, memory, of physical memory. And uh, of course, uh, since we are in 16-bit mode, the register will be 16 bits wide. Um, and we will only have some basic instruction sets from uh, the uh, AT86 uh, architecture. And of course, uh, on uh, since we're assuming that we have an x86-64 architecture, we will also have two other memory modes, which are the product mode, uh, which is the 32-bit compatibility mode, and we will have the long mode, which is the full 64-bit uh, support. And um, that's where we want to land at the end of the boot process, right? Because that's uh, what our kernel will assume we're in at. Right, as for the uh, game plan, the roadmap will be following. Um, I guess there are three main components that we... Uh, I'd say two main components we need to think about. Uh, the first one is the bootloading which is the process of actually loading our kernel image and putting it into memory and uh, uh, hand and execution to it. And then the kernel itself, which actually does uh, all the fun stuff, right? Um, and since we want to do everything from scratch, we will also need to be thinking about the bootloading. For bootloading, there are two types of bootloaders. There are uh, the BIOS ones, the ones that use the BIOS to to do stuff and there are the newer ones that use uefi um uefi is unified extended i guess a firmware interface if i remember correctly um so for us uh we'll do the bios one i am reading that uefi bootloaders are easier so maybe that's not something that we want to do first because we like to do it the hard way um, right, so for the bootloading uh, using the BIOS, we'll need uh, two stages uh, because, uh, as I said just before, um, we only have the first sector that gets loaded into memory by the BIOS. Um, that means that we only have 512 bytes loaded um, by the BIOS into memory, of which uh, there's quite a chunk that's reserved for uh, the partitioning of the drive, since it's the first sector. It also contains the uh, partition table and stuff like that. 
Um, so we actually have about 447 or 448 bytes uh, of code that's usable on the first sector. So if we want to do anything meaningful, um, we will have to actually split our brute loading uh, effort into two uh, stages. So the first one will just look for the second one and load it. And then the second stage will do um, quite interesting stuff. Uh, so here in, in our roadmap, I've wrote, I have wrote I wrote, uh, so physical memory mapping. So create a map of physical memory, the regions that we can use, the regions that are um, reserved for uh, devices and stuff like that, just so that we can mark them and avoid um, allocating them once we start writing our um, memory allocators. Uh, we'll do video video mode setup because we want to do uh, a bit more than just text. Hopefully, we want to have graphics. Uh, switch to project mode, and uh, project mode, of course, is the 32-bit uh, mode. And once we do this, I think we will stop using assembly and move into C code. But we will need to have some way to switch back and forth be between uh, real mode and project mode uh, so that we can call the BIOS services because we can't call the BIOS services from uh, anywhere other than uh, real mode. So uh, once we are here, we are in C land and what we will do is we will initialize uh, uh, a paging subsystem, just basic paging. Uh, this will be our first look at virtual memory mapping and stuff like that. Um, I'm thinking that we will have a um, a config file that will tell the second stage of the bootloader where the by where the actual kernel is, uh, what what the what's the the file name or location, also maybe some other uh, config items, right? So what we need to do first is read that config file, uh, load the kernel uh, file as defined in um, in the config into memory. Uh, switch to long mode because the kernel file will be a 64-bit executable. Uh, the kernel will not know anything about project mode or read mode, right? We just want to focus on doing actual fun stuff. Um, right, and once the kernel is loaded into memory, we switch into long mode, uh, and then we hand off the execution to kernel. Maybe we'd want to... Um, I guess, think of a way to send data to the kernel uh, somehow. Uh, and why that might be interesting is that there are quite a few things that we'll be doing here in the second stage. So for example, the physical memory mapping, um, the video mode setup, and the frame buffers and stuff like that. So um, unless we want to redo, redo that uh, work in the kernel, uh, itself, it might be nice to just hand it a structure that gives it the the, the data it needs, uh, the the memory map and and stuff like that, just so that you can use it uh, directly, right? Um, and that might come in handy if we want to do um, the UEFI bootloader because the kernel will have basically no dependency on the bootloader; it will just expect a sort of structure to be somewhere in memory. Um, and the bootloader's job will just be to load the kernel into memory, put that structure in there somewhere, and call the kernel, and the kernel will uh, resume its its work uh, without really caring about how it was loaded. Um, right, and the second, I guess, main item we have on this list is the actual kernel. So uh, we'll be doing stuff like threading, uh, SMP, uh, file systems and uh, quite a few fun stuff uh, playing with uh, uh, interrupts and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess that's the plan for now. It might change once we start working on this in a live stream event, uh, since we will be making decision on what other fun stuff um, we'll be working on, given time and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, one thing that I haven't mentioned here, I, I didn't put in the uh, game plan, is that we will also have to probably write quite a bit of tooling to make uh, things easy, uh, at least easier for ourselves. So we have quite a few things that need to be 
automated, so we will need to do uh, some scripts or some uh, small C utilities to, to make that easier. I guess that's it for the introduction. Uh, in the next video, we'll start working on the first stage of the bootloader. And uh, yeah, see you. Bye.